Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I've had a lot of people ask me recently what I consider with a lot of the exercises that I value more and more and more as a coach, uh, because again, I haven't written a new program in quite a while. Would I ever make a new novice program based around more of my coaching recommendations rather than the cookie cutter programs? And you know, that's a good question. And I've thought about it, and, you know, this video probably won't be up for several weeks. I don't know what's going to be going on in the world in several weeks because of all the events we have happening right now. And most gyms around the world being closed. Uh, I feel like right now is not really an appropriate time to put out a new program. Until everybody has home gyms sorted. Everyone who cares about training. Or gyms reopen up. Um, but would I consider a, a new novice program? Sure. Especially now that I have detailed instructional videos for all these lifts and people would probably need to watch those lifts and I would probably need to find a way to link all those videos uh, somehow into uh, a program with it. All right, I would almost need to maybe combine all them together and make a video with the tutorials included. But would I swap a lot of things around? Yeah. Would I even consider making it a four day up or lower? Yeah, absolutely. Because as much as I might like full body, I do feel like um, a lot of people don't enjoy the full body structure. And since I tend to take novices over to four day a week pretty quick anyways for the extra intra-session volume, I'd consider writing if I did a, a 3.0, it would probably be an upper lower. Right? It would probably be an upper lower. And that's been the thing. You know, we have had people say, why don't you make an intermediate full body? Because there are already intermediate full bodies at work and I don't program anybody that way. So since I don't program people that way, why would I write one that way, All right? But if I were to make a, a newer program, yeah, there'd be changes. It would be based heavily around box squats, good mornings, sumo deadlifts. All right, these are things that would need to be included. Um, I wouldn't worry at all about things like chin-ups, even overhead press anymore, because I find there's certain segments of the population that they struggle with shoulder issues if too much of those are there. And they're not necessarily the best overall builders. We can argue about that. Uh, I would probably put a little more row variation. I don't know exactly what I would do. I would probably prescribe more upper back rowing. It would have to be either inverted rows or something like dumbbell incline rows. All right, I would make people do some sort of row all four workouts on an upper lower. Uh, pen lay rows done correctly would need to be there at least two days a week. Probably put them on the upper lower or, or on the lower days. We would build the program around box squats. Below parallel box squats. Now that again, people have a proper tutorial. Because that's been my biggest issue with the, the box squat is getting people to learn how to box squat. Right, as much as I love the box squat, I hate to prescribe it because at least people understand depth on a back squat. They understand that they have to go to that point. And again, when you put people on a box, they just don't get it. And there are coaches and people out there, professionals, who don't like the box squat because they consider it dangerous. Because done incorrectly, the box squat is extremely dangerous. What do we mean incorrectly? Bouncing off the box with a heavy weight on your back? bouncing on the box and that should make uh, sense if you look at the way it compresses the spine right you look at the way it compresses the spine you'll get hurt eventually it's stupid but watch how I do that wonder at max here notice the soft touch to sit back and then the stand up right soft touch in the stand up I mean, in a lot of things, I could write amazing novice programs if people had access to more equipment, too. I mean, if every gym had a reverse hyper, I would actually program that into a novice program. See, that's our problems we run into, though, is, is equipment limitations. Even with the box squat, I feel like a lot of people struggle to put a box together. Like, I literally have to describe to people how to build a box to clients all the time. Like, I don't have anything to box squat on. Like, we'll stack up 45-pound plates. Stack up bumper plates. Because if you leave them to their devices, though, that is that is still the biggest downside to writing an appropriate novice program, 
even when left to their own devices, I have clients who watch all these videos and they will still squat to a box. If they, if they don't see an immediate solution, they'll, they'll squat to the high box. And we're losing a lot of the benefits at that point. But box squats, good mornings, those would be the basis of our lower body training. The box squat and the good morning. Uh, we would do sumo deadlifts instead of conventional. And it's for the reasons I break down. And it's not because I'm anti-conventional. I just think that for your volume work, the sumo works better. Now, a lot of people, we could do the deficit deadlift and they'd get benefits. But I mean, for overall prescription, it would need to be sumo. And I think the issue is we still run into to problems. A lot of people say, well, Jason, you've made detailed tutorials. How could anybody not know how to sumo? I, get, I have clients right now who've watched that tutorial and still can't see more deadlift. Okay. I have clients right now, I'm working with newer clients who, they watched the, that video I did and what do you think they do? They look down at the bar when they grip it and they start with their ass way up in the air and stiff like it. Okay. So we can make all these tutorials in the world, but that is a thing that, that is hard when you write cookie cutter type programs. That's the hard thing when you write cookie cutter type programs. Even when you provide all the instructional material, do you really think people watch it and understand it? You really don't. But those would be the lists we would probably do. I would keep bench press in. I'd keep bench press in. Maybe some incline benching or dips. I mean, that's that's the other things that we have to have to consider the way different people are built. You would have to give options, right? We need to give options. Some people can't do dips without pain, or they don't even have dipping bars at their gym. For those people, they would need to do incline. What do you do for a person though if if they have a home gym with a rack, no adjustable bench? Because adjustable benches cost more and they handle less weight. Not everyone has an inclined bench even at home. We're gonna see more and more home gyms dominating. So that's the other thing, any program you write is gonna to have to be doable with basic home equipment. So I would say, look, depending upon how you're built, either pick the incline or pick the dips and run those as a second chest movement after the bench. Not everyone, not everyone has access to even that who has a barbell and rack. Becomes problematic, doesn't it? I mean, basically it would be me just throwing in a secondary chest exercise and go do what you can based with the equipment you have. Flat dumbbell press, incline bench, dips, and removing the overhead press. But everyone who has a barbell can overhead press. I think less and less those other lifts are better overall movements. I'm not saying I don't have clients who, who overhead press, I do. But, you know, in terms of building muscle and strength as quickly as possible, I see a lot of people out there who struggle to build, to build their chest with the bench as the only lift in their, in their training. And we have to go with what's going to put the most muscle on you because there's nothing special at the overhead press that we can't get with other stuff. Bridge the gap by doing lots of upper back pulling or face pulls. But that's the other thing. When you put in all these other lifts, people won't always do them, especially younger guys. A lot of people will see these programs and be like, how could anybody fail on these programs? Well, I've ha had clients who don't do some of their smaller movements they're told to do who are paying you to write programs for them. Paying you $250 a month to program for them update them in Skype, you get them in Skype, and it turns out they haven't done any good mornings or face pulls for two weeks, three weeks. Because they didn't think they're that important. Or they just don't like them. So, again, another issue we run into with a lot of these cookie cutter programs, things that when you start coaching larger numbers of people, you realize are problems. They're problems. 
Um, and a lot of people would say, look, well, just because people can't follow instructions doesn't mean you shouldn't put out a program. And that's a valid point. So I might end up coming up with a Ice Cream Fitness 3.0. I really might. I'll need to put some thought into it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.